Hi, let's talk about Bernoulli's Principle. So, Bernoulli's Principle is another piece of the story when we talk about fluids in motion. So, the other piece is the idea of continuity. And continuity is necessary for explaining Bernoulli's observation about fluids traveling on the level, which means there's no change in height. And what Bernoulli observed is that if a fluid remains traveling at the same elevation or in level travel, as the speed of a fluid increases, he observed that the internal pressure of a fluid decreases. And when you factor in continuity, this observation is literally just the idea of conservation of energy and an application of the work energy theory that says the work done on an object changes the kinetic energy of that object. So we'll start by taking a look at a level application where we have a fluid that goes from a wide area to a narrow area. And my fluid is represented by the shaded region that I have here. There's going to be some pressure all throughout that fluid as it moves. So if I look along that line, there's a force all along that line. As that line of fluid moves, the force moves with that line. That means that force is doing work. And the work done by a force is equal to the size of my force times the distance I move. So I'm going to call that distance x1. And my force is the pressure on side 1 times the cross-sectional area on side 1. Now on side 2, as this shaded fluid moves, into region 2, well, there's a force pushing backwards against that because there's a pressure of the fluid inside here, and that pressure is going to create a force equal to the pressure on this side times the cross-sectional area. And that force is going to have to push against that fluid along a distance x2. Now, for the case of an incompressible fluid, the volume of fluid that I have over here would have to be exactly the same as the volume of fluid that I have over there. So if I have a short distance x1, I'm going to have a much larger distance x2 over here, but my area times my distance is just my volume. So the work that I do on side 1, pushing the fluid in, is going to be the pressure on side 1 times my volume of fluid. The work that I do on side 2 pushing against it is going to be minus the pressure on side 2 times my volume. So my net work is going to be the difference in pressure. The pressure on side 1 minus the pressure on side 2 times my change in volume. Well, from the work energy theory, the net work changes kinetic energy. So my final side is side 2. The kinetic energy of that fluid on side 2 would be 1 half times the mass of my fluid times the speed on side 2 squared. On side 1, it's 1 half times the mass of that fluid times the speed on side 1 squared. So if I set those two equal to each other for my work energy theory, I could divide by the volume of the fluid. And that would leave on the left the pressure on side 1 minus the pressure on side 2. On the right-hand side, I have the mass over the volume. So we said this is an incompressible fluid. So for an incompressible fluid, the mass over volume is exactly our density, which is a constant. So our pressure on side 1 minus our pressure on side 2 is our kinetic energy density on side 2 minus our kinetic energy density on side 1. Here, on the left, my second term, term 2, is negative, and term 1 is positive. On the right-hand side, term 2 is positive, term 1 is negative. So if I add my negative terms to the other side, I get the pressure on side 1 plus the kinetic energy density on side 1, 1 half times the density times the speed on side 1 squared. That's going to equal the pressure on side 2 plus the kinetic energy density on side 2. 1 half times the density times the speed on side 2 squared. So back to Bernoulli's observation. 
as we go to a narrow area, speed increases. As speed increases, we have more kinetic energy per volume. Pressure has to decrease as a result. It's just the work energy theory applied to fluids. Now there is some other property that could do work that we talked about. We could have a change in height. Well, adding in a change in height is really just Bernoulli's principle with no change in kinetic energy. When we talked about our pressure equation, we said we get a difference in pressure that's equal to the density of our fluid times gravity times our change in height if the fluid's at rest. Well, it could be moving and we'd still experience this as long as the velocity stayed constant. This we could think of as our potential energy per volume, our density times the strength of gravity times our elevation. So if I put it all together, pressure could change because my kinetic energy density changes. It could change because my potential energy density changes. Or thinking about it another way, again, term one negative, term two positive, term one positive, term two negative. I would have, putting everything together, the pressure plus the kinetic energy density, one half times the density times the current squared, the speed of that fluid squared, plus the density times the strength of gravity times the elevation of that fluid is going to be equal to a constant. And that is the total Bernoulli's equation for explaining what happens as fluids are in motion when we combine it with our idea about continuity, where the area times the speed has to remain constant. Thanks for watching.